Hello, and welcome to this GIS tech video on GIS metadata. The learning objectives for this lesson are to describe what GIS metadata is and why it is important, identify the standard components of GIS metadata files, be familiar with using GIS metadata in an industry standard GIS tool, and problem solve with metadata and the problem of data sets not lining up correctly. Although perhaps not the most exciting topic in learning about GIS, metadata is nonetheless the most important topic you can learn about. I hope through this technical video you will gain an appreciation for the role metadata plays in terms of understanding and curating your GIS data. I'll also give you a hands-on demonstration on how to work with metadata files in a standard desktop GIS environment. I will also give you a demonstration of a very common problem of data sets not lining up correctly when working with GIS files and how metadata can help you solve this problem. Metadata is a term that is applied to a variety of data handling and curation situations. Broadly speaking, metadata is the idea of data that describes data. In a GIS context, this can mean basic facts about what the data set is, when it was created, where it was created, how it was created, and who created it. For example, you can consider a legend on a map to be a type of metadata. As the map legend tells you what the map means in terms of showing symbol colors, classes, and so forth. Another simple way you might think of metadata is thinking of a can without a label. The label tells you what's inside the can. It is important to understand why metadata is important. Whether you are brand new to GIS or an experienced veteran, you know that data is the most important and time-consuming aspect of working with GIS software. Thus, having good metadata that allows you to describe and understand your GIS data sets is essential. Metadata can help you answer basic questions about your GIS data sets such as, whether the data are good or bad, whether the data are appropriate for your use, and whether the data are compatible with other data you may already have. In the next slide, we'll look at some specific ways you can get this type of information from metadata files. GIS metadata files are generally text documents that describe a given GIS data set. GIS metadata files come in a wide variety of file formats. In this example, the metadata file is an HTML file. However, metadata can be stored in multiple file formats such as HTML and XML. In the hands-on portion of this lecture, I'll show you how metadata files are used in GIS software. GIS metadata files contain standard, common information as seen in the top part of this image and I will talk about next. Common sections of metadata files include identification, or what is the data set, data quality, or how the data set was created, spatial data organization, or how is the data shown in terms of vector data, or points, lines, and polygons, or raster data, or a grid of cells, or some other format, spatial reference, or how is the data spatially referenced in terms of coordinate systems, used to reference features in the data set, entity and attribute, or what does the data show, or what are the attributes associated with each feature, such as rows and columns, distribution, or how to acquire the data in terms of a person, organization, and contact details, and metadata reference, or who created and documented the main metadata and their contact information. One important side note comment is that the sections of the metadata file that you just learned about are often maintained as metadata standards. In the United States, the Federal Geographic Data Commission, or FGDC, maintains geospatial metadata standards and guidelines. Visit the FGDC website to learn more about geospatial metadata standards and the guidelines. In this next part of the lesson, I will give you a hands-on demonstration of working with metadata in an industry standard commercial GIS tool called ArcMap. 
After giving you a basic overview of working with metadata, I'll give you a specific example of a common problem of data sets not lining up correctly when working with GIS files and how metadata can help you solve this problem. In this hands-on demonstration of working with GIS metadata files, I first want to show you a program called Arc Catalog, and that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. Arc Catalog is a program designed for managing GIS data files in general. If you're a Windows user, you can kind of think of it like Windows Explorer for GIS files. And specifically, we're going to look at what's called a shape file. And the one we're going to look at is a shape file of world countries from 2008. So if you see here, I'm going to click on the left on world countries. And this main panel here, you can see I get what you would call a thumbnail view. Now to actually see the metadata, you click on the tab right here that says description. This screen that just came up that said upgrade metadata, you'll see um, in just a moment how you can change the styling of the metadata around. Right now I have it set to FGDC metadata standard that you learned about earlier in the video and we'll come back to this in a moment. However, what you see now in this description pane is metadata about this world country shapefile, a description, its geographical extent, in this case, the entire, almost the entire world, given its world countries. Now, Arc Catalog in the ArcGIS environment will, will add its own kind of metadata as well. So that's what you can see here. And if you scroll down further through this, here are things like we talked about earlier in the video, the spatial reference, coordinate systems, the lineage where the data set came from and so forth. For example, it started at the US Department of State. Really good metadata will have lots of documentation. You never know when you need to go back and look at something about a file that you weren't aware of when you started working with it. Here we can see the various fields or columns in the data set. FID, the feature ID, so forth, object ID, its shape, country codes, and so forth, where those come from. And if we go to the bottom, now here we see the FGDC metadata that I mentioned earlier in the video. And here you can see more like the example you, you saw earlier in the HTML XML file. Okay. Now, our catalog also gives you the ability to get a quick preview of what this data set looks like in terms of the map, and your standard map controls are available for that, pan and zoom and so forth. You can also take a look at the, the attributes underlying the data set, and these are those columns I mentioned. So if you don't know, for example, what FIPS underscore CNTRY means, you can go back in the metadata to understand what that attribute field really is, and that can be very helpful. Now, one thing to mention as well is that you can change the styling of the metadata around depending on the standards being used, and that's what this message is related to. If I were to go to Customize, Art Catalog Options, and then Metadata, you can see you have a different styles of metadata that can be displayed. For example, Inspire from Europe and ISO standards, and then just item description, which is Esri's sort of default styling. And when you do that, um, things sometimes will change in this description panel here. You can see there's a lot less now being shown because I changed the style. So just be aware of that. Now, our catalog is a very specialized tool for working just with GIS data sets. ArcMap, which I'll now bring up here, is what maybe you're more familiar with or will work with more in terms of actual data. But you can see in ArcMap you have the Catalog tab over here that if you were to go and find the same data set that I was just showing you in Arc Catalog,
and if you go there's that world countries 2008 if I right click on that and go to item description you will see the similar description and preview that we had over in our catalog it's the exact same functionality just a different way to get at it and much like our catalog you can change the styling by going customize ArcMap options, metadata, and so forth. In this portion of the hands-on demonstration of working with GIS metadata files, I want to show you a very common problem that new students of GIS encounter when starting to work with data sets they download off the web. And this is the problem of two GIS data sets that you know should be in the same spatial reference or essentially lining up together, not actually lining up. So let's, let me show you this problem and how you can fix it with metadata. So I'm going to use catalog here in ArcMap. And I'm going to go first add um, a quad map for Monroe County, which is where I live in upstate New York. I'm going to add that into ArcMap and I'll just skip that for demonstration purpose and now I'm also going to add a road file that I know is from Monroe County so when those roads come into ArcMap they should be lining up on top of this raster quad map okay so here comes Monroe County roads I'll put those on top of the raster okay this first off gives me some that there's going to be some kind of problem unknown spatial reference okay that means that this shapefile doesn't know what its geographical reference is in the real world and hence it's not actually lining up with the quad map so for example I'll make the lines a little thicker so they can be read more clear clearly still not showing up if I zoom to the extent of this layer Notice that it's off on its own. There's no quad map. Also, too, it's good to build an intuition for the coordinates that are being shown. Um, through experience, I know that these are decimal degree coordinates just by their number format. However, when I zoom to the full extent of the whole entire map, you can see that um, things start to break down and um, I have problems. Okay, so basically what I need to do is figure out what the coordinate system is of the Monroe County roads so that it will project correctly onto the quad map. Okay, metadata is one way that I can go and solve this problem. Okay, to solve this problem, I'm first going to change my metadata styling to FGDC. So I'm going to go to Customize, Arc Map Options, Metadata, Metadata Style, FGDC. Okay. Then I'm going to go to catalog and the reason I changed the styling was I know that it will give me the correct presentation of the spatial reference information for what I need. So now I'm going to right click on Monroe County Roads and go to item description that you saw earlier in the hands-on example. And what I'm going to try to do is see if I can find information on the coordinate system being used for the Monroe County roads. So I'm going to scroll through here and look for that somewhere. Now in FGDC metadata this is typically what's called the spatial entity information. or sometimes called the spatial reference information. And what I see here is that the geographic coordinates are decimal degrees, and that the datum being used is the North American datum of 1983. So this clues me in that this data set, the Monroe County Roads, is in what ArcMap would call a geographical coordinate system, or decimal degrees, using the North American datum of 1983, okay? Now I'm going to use a tool then to fix this problem and it's called define projection
Okay. And before I use this tool, let me give you some background. If you look at the Monroe County Roads shape file on my file system, you can see that I have this, the, the standard files of a shape file, the DBF, the SHP, the index, SHX. This is actually the metadata file, and then this is a lock file created by um, having the file open in ArcMap. The define projection command is going to write a new file called a PRJ file that will allow this shapefile to project correctly. And you may wonder why the PRJ file was not there originally. It's just the case that sometimes when you download data sets from public GIS repositories, they do not come with a PRJ file, so you have to define one yourself. And that's what metadata can help you determine the right projection and coordinate system to use. So back to my define projection data management tool. And um, it's a pretty easy tool to use in terms of input. In this case, I'm going to select Monroe County Roads. And you can see here the coordinate system is unknown because it's missing the PRJ file. So I'm going to go here, click on this, and remember based on the metadata, I knew I had decimal degrees, also known as geographic coordinate systems, and my datum was North American datum 1983. So what I do here is I go through and look for that coordinate system. So North American datum 1983, I hit OK. I run this tool, just hit OK there. Um, you can see down here that the, the uh, Define Projection tool is running. There was a lock on the file, and lo and behold, these red lines now are drawing all over because the roads now have the correct coordinate system and projection to allow them to line up with the quad. If I zoom in a little closer, you can see um, how the red lines match the roads in the underlying quad map. And behind the scenes here on disk, you can see that a PRJ file got written out. Um, I'm making this video in January 2017, and um, that's when the PRJ file just got created by ArcMap. So use the metadata to find out things about your data set when you run into problems like data layers not overlapping. Often it's just a matter of getting the projection set correctly so data sets can project on the fly with one another. In this technical video, you learned how to describe what GIS metadata is and why it is important, how to identify standard components of GIS metadata files, and how to be familiar with using GIS metadata in an industry standard GIS tool. Finally, you learned how to do a little bit of problem solving with metadata in terms of a classic problem of GIS datasets not lining up correctly. I hope through this technical video you've gained an appreciation for the role metadata plays in terms of understanding and curating your GIS data. Additionally, now that you have seen a hands-on demonstration on how to work with metadata files in a standard desktop GIS environment, I hope that you can feel more confident with tackling data problems and using metadata. The following are references used in preparing this video. If you enjoyed this GIS tech video, or have any comments or questions, feel free to contact me at the email address below. Thank you for watching.